Number four, is a system at equilibrium if the rate constants of the forward and the reverse reactions are equal? Okay, so we kind of did a little bit more in depth or if you want more context, go back to number three in which we talked about what makes uh, a reaction at equilibrium, right? Here is a reversible reaction because I see that I have this double arrow here. So that means that the forward rate is happening at the same time as the reverse rate, right? And remember, what we said was that the rate of the forward, whoop, forward reaction has to equal the rate of the reverse reaction. And this happens at equilibrium. Okay, so now to answer the question, right, it says, is the system at equilibrium if the rate constants of the forward and the reaction rate are equal? Well, we know that the rate has to be equal, right? But now this, come up, this comes up in chapter 12, right, with rate constants and rates. Remember that the rate constant and the rate, they have a formula right? So the formula would be rate equals K times the concentration of the reactants, right? And that's all raised to their orders. Remember this when you guys did rates, probably in the chapter before this. So there is a link between rate and K, which is the rate constant. A rate constant is the lowercase K. Now, if I just plug this in, right, instead of saying rate equals, I can say that K times the reactance raised to the order for the forward reaction equals K times the reactance raised to the orders for the reverse reaction, right? So let's see. If I talk about the forward reaction, the forward reaction, and maybe I'll just put that over here. The forward reaction is N2O4 leading to 2NO2, right? So in that equation, this is the reactants, right? So maybe if I just put this up a little bit, I can say that for the forward reaction, it would be K times the concentration of just N2O4 and raised to whatever order that is. I don't know what it is, so I'm just going to label it as X. But do you see how it's just linked to the reactants? So I don't put the NO2 because that's a product and not a reactant. In your rate law, it's only reactant. Now, for the reverse reaction, which is literally the opposite way, the reactant would then be 2 NO2. You're going backwards, right? and you would produce N2O4. And now this is your reactant. So this would equal K, because that's what the rate equals. Rate equals K times the reactants of NO2 raised to some order. Can I say that it's two? Not really. I don't know if this happens in one step or not, but that's not really the point. Now the question is, is that are the rate constants the same? Well, in here you have two different variables, right? You have K and N2O4 and K and NO2. Keep in mind that a forward K value and a reverse K value, they're not the same because it's two different equations. So this would be like KF and this would be KR. F for forward, R for reverse. Since you have two variables here, they kind of play off of each other, right? The, the, the multiplication between the two of them has to be equal to the multiplication of the two on the other side. But they don't have to be the same. The only thing that is one variable on one side and the, other, the same variable on the other is the rate. So these do not have to be the same. The multiplication between the two has to be the same. 
But the KFs and the KRs, the rate constants, they don't have to be the same, aka they don't have to be equal. So is the system at equilibrium if the rate constants of the forward reaction equal? The answer is no. What needs to be the same? The rate of the forward and reverse reaction, Rxn, needs to be the same. And that's it. And there you go. So, guys, what do you think? Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. And I look forward to helping you guys out in future lessons. All right? So I'll see you in the next video. All right? Take care. Bye-bye.